So this is an example response of one of the runs. I would take in and I would put in these variables that, from that table that the software set up for me, and that, that I would take this 11% and put it in as my response. My response is 11% for this particular <coughs> run in my experiment. So every time you get this information, you kill 11%. That's right. There's, I don't know the uncertainty of these yet. But she's only 30. Pretty good around 300 cholesterol. Yeah, not bad. But, no, but she's only 30. <laughs> so what matters more, do you think, cholesterol or age? It's probably age. Probably age. Age. What if you're trying to figure that out? Would you go to that screen and change one thing at a time and try to figure it out? Onesie, twosie, ad hoc. No, uh, Tinker with age. There you go. She's talking about That's what you're trying to show us. Hey, you're you're right. Right. You're right. You're right. Well, what well, do you know? Here we go. So, so I reverse engineered it. Let me uh, <laughs> Let me exit out of this and go into jump and show you the data. Well, hang on. I want you to think about it. Okay, so this was my first person, I think. The age was 30, female, 130 cholesterol, HDLs, well, maybe not. But anyway, that was an example of one. But I would, I would input this data and then I would get a risk. If only I could see it on my screen here. Oh, I can't see it because my screen doesn't have enough resolution. Now the screen, I can't see it on the screen. There it is. Okay, so there's my risk. And I would input what I got out of the, out of the computer. You put it in there? I put in this, 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 and this. And then the, the um, risk calculator for these ones that say 0 .003, what it said is the risk is too low to calculate. And so I didn't want to say zero, and I knew it was less than, probably less than a half of a percent, otherwise it would have probably said 1% risk. So it was less than 1% rounded, so I said, well, it's less than a half a percent, so I'm going to call it three-tenths of a percent, somewhere in between a half percent and zero. So I just called it 0.00. Now remember that's, I'm approximating. How that be such a great number in terms of risk when the high blood pressure is so high. One, yeah, that is true. Because at 30, at an age of 30 and a low cholesterol, it doesn't matter. Yeah, a lot of risk, a lot of risk factor at that age. Probably a flaw in the underlying model. Say again? It's probably a flaw in the underlying model. How reliable are your data? <coughs> Pardon? How reliable are your data? <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> He's just reverse engineering. Sense of space. Right, and you can play with your slider and then see if it fits the model that's on the web. Right. So this is what the model looks like because you were asking what matters more: age or cholesterol. This this is a sample high risk person. This was row ten in my experiment. This is a thirty year old male, uh, two hundred fifty six cholesterol, um, twenty five HDL, which is really low. You want to be above forty on. And smokes, has high blood pressure, and takes high blood pressure medication. So this particular 30-year-old male has a 20% chance of having a heart attack in the next 10 years. For a 30-year-old, that's pretty hard. So, so the number on the left, on the y-axis, is, is the factor of weight, uh, of the weight. This number is the predicted probability, so 21%. This is the predictor from the website. Okay, and I created the model, and my model said estimated 22%. So it's now, pretty close. If you just eliminated the smoking, how does that affect the overall output? Well, that's a good question. So let's look at it. This, this particular person here, <coughs> if I look at the, I can look at the effects of each of these variables. This is the effect of age. So. And this is risk, so as age goes up, risk goes up. The steeper that slope is, the more significant the effect. Okay. So what's the third one? This is female versus male. Okay. There's not a whole lot I can do about that. Well, maybe with an expensive <laughs> surgery. It's still yeah. Even that wouldn't matter because they still have the other genes. Yeah, because you're right. right. You're still well, how do we know? Do you have that data or are you just hypothesize? Uh, 
We don't Some know. things we just do with our heart. But what's the third one over? This is total cholesterol. Okay, so that's and this is HDL cholesterol. Okay. So the higher the HDL, the lower your risk of heart attack. But it's not that steep. So, yeah, yeah. It looks like total cholesterol. Yeah, so maybe. So this matters a lot. Uh, smoker, yeah. there's your difference in smoker. If I were to be a non-smoker, it would drop down to about 10%. Of course, that's yeah. only fine. Yeah. Smoking yeah. is smoking yeah. smoking right. cholesterol. Right. That's yeah. really stupid. Yeah. It doesn't tell you how many. So that would be very really effective right. for a doctor trying to convince a patient change only one thing, stop smoking, and here's how much better off you will be. Yeah, if, if I were a doctor, which I would not be very good at, I would just tell them to stop aging. Or I'd say start being a female. Yeah. yeah. Start being a young female. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any problems <laughs> telling people that. I want to see that prescription. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are funny. It involves extensive transplants. <laughs> The, the author of this slide does not necessarily support the comments from the audience. <laughs> All right, let me see if I can get that model going. Well, let's do a little more slides and I'm going to model. The medication one is basically nil. Right, so the medication doesn't really matter much. Actually, if you do take high blood pressure medication, you're at a slightly higher risk. That's because you need higher blood pressure. That also shows, I mean, how high you are on the Y axis oh, means yeah. it's more important, right? <coughs> yes, this is bad. Yeah, so obviously age is higher than the others. Oh, to begin with, yes, yeah, yeah. that's right. And then cholesterol. Oh, I see what you're saying. And, and well, that's and because I started the scale at 30. If I had gone out to, I, I only started at 30 because I used, oh, I limited my experiments to people from 30, 30 to 70. Yeah. But you could extrapolate backwards and say, okay, if you are 20, your risk is going to be down at 10%, for example. We'll do that. I'll, I'll open this profile. Hopefully, if I can get this low, low resolution projector to work with the profile. This is a medium risk person. So, this is a 54 year old male with 130 cholesterol, HDL of 37, which is a little low. Smoker, uh, 145 systolic blood pressure, and takes blood pressure medication. 12% probability of a heart attack in the next 10 years. The, the reverse engineering this, the estimate was 14.5%. And I also give you the uncertainty. This model does not tell you the uncertainty. I mean, the, the web applet does not give you the uncertainty. When I create the model, I know the uncertainty. I know in reality it could be anywhere from six to twenty-three percent, fourteen percent. Could be anywhere in there. That's how uncertain this model is. Ninety-five percent confidence. Yes, this is ninety-five percent confidence. How do you know the uncertainty? It's based on my data. The data that I put in and what the model sped out, I couldn't tell you exactly what that web applet was going to give you. I could only approximate. What calculate your data? The number, the sample size is one factor. The variation of the of the variables is another factor. I was going to say, if you had more variables, what he was saying, if you had your heredity, if you had some of the other factors, that would that would um, shorten that, correct? That would tighten up this uncertainty, probably. The more the more predictors I have in my equation, the less uncertainty I have, because I'm using a, a my my uncertainty is the signal. I'm separating the signal from the noise. And the more variables I have that, that give me signal, the less my noise is. You're going to have to, to wrangle with newly introduced uncertainty from the additional parameters. Maybe, yes, that's true. Does jump give you the uncertainty? Can you tell me? That's what this is right here. Yeah, Usually, it's going to be the model. Of the model. The, 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 that web applet does not give me the uncertainty. Yeah, I want to tell you. Now, now, it's interesting. I mean, Don. Your smoker now, I mean, that's almost flat line there. That's right. So there's more. It doesn't much matter, does it? That's right. So you might as well light one up and have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> if, you're, if, you're, if you're 54 with these particular parameters. Yeah. Well, why wouldn't smoking be? It's too bad. It's not just a 
what is that just for? And I would imagine the whole thing it's, you get, some of those are going to flat find more and more too. <laughs> it's prob <laughs> probably probably. Uh, uh, once you get to the once you get to the age of 54 and your blood pressure is 145, those are probably the overriding factors of risk for heart attack. So the older you get, the more bad habits you can take on. Yes, that's my philosophy. And I'll say my practice. <laughs> there are things to back that up. And I need to hurry up so I can get to the bars. <laughs> running a little longer. Okay, we're doing okay on time. Yeah, and here's a sample low risk person. So I'm, I showed you three slides. I showed you a high risk and a medium risk. Yeah, now I'm showing you a low risk person. How old are they? This is a 34 year old female with a 220 cholesterol. That's a little high, right? Anything over 200, your doctor's beating yeah, on you. Yeah. Yeah. He's up on the pork spare ribs. And then a non smoker with a 110 systolic blood pressure and no high blood pressure medication. This one is one that the applet said, I can't really estimate this, it's too low. So it was less than a half of a percent, or otherwise it would have spit out one percent. So I approximated it at 0.3%. If the person is a non-smoker, how can there be any data at all for that attitude? What is the question? If the person is a non-smoker, you have data showing a positive response to the question of smoking. Because I had other inputs that it were smokers. We're, just, just remember how the, the, these models are built. They're built out of orthogonal medical data. It's not core, it's, it's a pretty good thing because the data that goes into them is, is largely not correlated. In other words, a, a non-smoker would not be zero, 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 zero. Okay. No, only because all these other factors brought it down low, which age is one of them. Yeah. The fact that she's a female. Female is a female. Yeah, but if you look at it, being a male is going to reduce your risk. That's right, and this, at this particular yeah. level, male is actually lower. But not, not this is the uncertainty. These blue bars are the uncertainty. So if I can draw a horizontal line across that, it's the age normal. Through the blue, blue bars, it's not safe. In fact, none of these factors are really significant at this age. If, if I, I could draw a horizontal line through any of these and stay within the blue dashed uncertainties of this estimate, so none of them really matter. Uh, now, now you say the data.